Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really good dish that you can use in all kinds of recipes. Um, I'm going to do a slow cooker shredded beef. Now, I was tempted to put Mexican at the beginning. I am doing a Mexican style one. Uh, but the point here is the cooking technique, okay? So if you change the seasonings, you're, it'll still come out good. Um, one ingredient that you may find is slightly unusual in this is I'm using club soda instead of bouillon. The reason for that is, is if you're aware of some techniques in Chinese cooking, um, baking soda is used to tenderize meat. And that's why you'll notice some restaurant dishes have like an unusual texture that you don't seem to be able to duplicate at home. And if that's why, it's because they're marinating the beef in baking soda. Some restaurants wash it off well, some don't, you can taste it. Um, but the bicarb in the club soda acts like baking soda. Okay, and since you're going to be cooking this for four or five hours, it has a really good tenderizing effect. Now, if you're worried about salt, believe it or not, club soda is extremely low. It only has 45 milligrams of sodium, which is 3%, 2%, sorry, of your daily intake on here per can. Now, you're not going to be eating the whole roast in one sitting, so I wouldn't worry about the salt. <coughs> so for this, here are the ingredients. So set the roast aside for the time being and prepare your seasonings. First thing you want to do is juice the limes. And I have this nice lemon lime reamer color coded if you couldn't figure it out for yourself. I always use regular limes for lime juice. Uh, one day I went to the store and all they had was key limes. And not only are they bitter, um, they're full of seeds. And it's a real pain to try to get them out after. And you don't get much juice out of them either, so just get normal limes for this. Once your limes are juiced, just measure the dry seasoning into it. Now I did put the chili powder to taste. The first time I made this, I did use three teaspoons. I found it a little too strong for my liking, so I'm going to cut it back to two for this one. So once those are in, just get a spoon and kind of mix that up a bit to get the flavors starting in the lime juice right away. You might have noticed I switched knives here. That paring knife I did for the limes just won't work with the garlic. So as usual, just cut your ends off, give it a quick thump. Peel the skins off, set it aside, and then just chop them up fine. Yeah, I just chopped the garlic, and I threw that in. Forgot the camera was off, but I can see it here. Okay, there's a fairly coarse chop on this. It's going to be in there for four or five hours, so you don't have to really worry about doing this too fine. And last but not least, I put in the dried onion. I always prefer dried onion to fresh and slow cooked dishes uh, because it just has a different sort of flavor that really accentuates the dish. And if you were here, you would see how wonderful this smells, so take my word for it. Now, last thing is get the tomato paste in here. And just spoon that in. Don't worry if this is not completely dissolved. With the slow cooker, it will definitely dissolve over time. Mash that in briefly. Okay, so we're we're ready for the first can. And by the way, you know, if you do keep some of these in the fridge, do bring them to room temperature first. If you don't, it's going to take longer for your dish to cook. Put in a bit at once because you will notice how it fizzes up because the tomato is slightly acidic. The club soda is basic and it forms an acid base reaction where gas is liberated. Looks kind of cool, eh? You want to do one can in here because if you do it right in the slow cooker, if you've got a small one, it might froth over. And you don't want to be spilling stuff before you even start. Okay, 
like I said, if there's chunks, don't matter. Cooking for four or five hours. Just put that aside and start on your meat. My regular viewers will note that I'm using a boning knife today instead of a chef's knife or a cleaver. The reason for this, it's much easier to work cutting up meats. Now, if you have a boning knife around the house and you've never used it, be very careful. These things are meant to be extremely sharp. Okay? And you can cut yourself easily and badly without much effort. So, have respect for your tools. So, start with just getting the string off. Luckily, this one only had one. So, you want to chop this in three or four pieces and take off excess fat. Generally, I will trim along the lines that have connective tissue. It makes it easier to take it apart. And I always try to use gloves when I have them for this. It's much cleaner and it just feels nicer on your hands. And you're not so hesitant about grabbing the meat because it feels greasy and cold and gross. Now you do want to move, take off as much fat as you can but you do want to leave some of the connective tissues like gristle or whatnot because they will come apart and add flavor to the dish plus it's also really good for you um, that one's got a big chunk of nasty at the back so that's gonna have to come off always cut away from yourself do not cut towards yourself Now that just looks like tendon, so I'm going to leave that in. Yeah. Whether you cut this way or that way doesn't really matter. The reason for doing this is it creates more surface area, which means the meat will cook faster and the flavors will penetrate more. You're shredding this at the end, uh, so, you know, that's not really that much of an issue. Now, this is a solid piece of fat. This is coming out because if you don't do this you are going to have to degrease your dish later and that's kind of a pain because you have to pass it through a sieve with ice cubes and the fat will freeze up on the spot and then you can just scrape it off the top Okay. so the majority of the fat is coming off here. If I lose a little meat, this makes so much meat. Um, it's amazing. So if you lose a couple of bits here and there, don't worry about it. Now I'm just going to take that piece off and I think I'll just cut it straight down here to expose what's going on in the middle. Okay, so that's fat, but that's connective tissue, okay? And that will liquefy in the dish. Now, if you can't cut away from yourself, cut down instead of toward. But I'm going to leave some of that on, but take off a bit. And trim this down that way. And yes, advanced cooks will say I'm being really sloppy, but the point is here is to teach new people, and I don't want to do fancy pulls on it and have people imitate me and cut themselves, okay? All right, so the meat's ready to go. And just pop that in, no ceremony. And take our frothy bowl, just pour that over the meat. Get all that good stuff in there. Now this one you just pour right in. There's enough there's enough room that it's not gonna go over. And you will 
not get bubbly sauce by the time this is finished. All this will cook down. Just kind of poke at it with a spoon or something. Because ideally what you should be doing is you should be cutting your chunks in such a way that everything fits under the surface of the liquid. I'm going to transfer this to another counter now. I've got a close plug. Cover it, plug it in, set it on high. Okay, I was out shopping for a couple hours, and this is actually the two hour mark. So I thought I would just stop and give you a look here. That's looking real nice. I'll zoom in a bit. Yeah. The fluid level has gone down a bit, the meat is sticking out a bit, but that's okay. What I will do is just get some tongs and turn it over now so it doesn't dry out. But you shred this in the juices after you're done anyways, but that, this way you won't have any hard bits. And you can sort of see, you can give it a squeeze there and see how it's doing. There's the collagen bits I was talking about. That stuff is actually really good for you. And it doesn't even taste funny when it's all melted down. It just thickens it up really nicely. Okay, yeah, there's still a lot of liquid in here, so nothing to worry about. It's still looking pretty tough, but it has shrunk up quite a bit. Well, it's been nearly five hours. I checked it at four and it wasn't doing that good, so I just thought I'd let it go but I think now it should be alright so what you can do is either use the tongs and just give it a squeeze yeah if it will just shred like that you're ready to go so what you're going to do now is just turn the heat off um, you can either move the container out of here I usually do so it's easier to work with I'll put it on the stove and, and get a couple of forks I don't have two meat forks, so I've got a meat fork and a large fork. And it's as simple as this. You just start pulling away at it. And you do it right in the sauce. And it may seem like an exorbitant amount of sauce, but when this cools down and you've shredded it enough, all of the sauce will go into the meat, believe it or not. So just keep going at it like that. An alternative method, if you're getting frustrated about chasing the meat around in the bottom of the crock pot, is to get a large strainer and just dig out the meat and transfer it to a plate, like so. And then what you can do is just shred it right on the plate. The important thing is that once all the meat is shredded, um, you put it back in the juices. Now, of course, the consistency you want it, if it's, you find it too juicy, you can take some of the sauce out, and so on. It is your dinner, as I always say. Now, if you have people that will go, ooh, ooh, because not all of the connective tissues dissolved in the cooking time, you can pick them out because you have that choice unlike when you buy <laughs> processed meats like hamburgers at your favorite takeout place it's fully shredded and as you can see the strainer sitting in the bottom there's not that much juice left and so you can see that's how much meat you get which is actually a lot you can make a lot of dishes with this I'm actually going to take some of this tonight and make burritos for supper which I am going to film for you okay so once that's in just get your meat fork you don't want to scratch your nice dish but just basically stir this up with a fork or a spoon or something and make sure all that juice gets in here okay and then let, let that cool down before you're going to work with it and that is how you make slow cooker shredded beef. Thanks for watching, and I do hope to see you again. Bye-bye.